This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to answer the question, can Bitcoin still hit $200,000 per coin this year in 2021? In order to answer this question, we have to rewind back to May of 2020 when we had the Bitcoin halving and we, we really were promised the moon. This is the most bullish part of the cycle from the halving up to about 12 to 18 months after the halving. Things were a little bit sluggish right after the halving, and then Bitcoin really began to take off at the end of the summer and in the, the beginning of the fourth quarter of 2020. And it, it peaked in around April. At the time, people were worried about Elon Musk and energy FUD. There's some other FUD out there. But in retrospect, what we can see now looking back is that this collapse in Bitcoin's price was much less driven by Musk, who had a very temporary effect with his bearish comments on Bitcoin's energy usage, which really was a non-issue, but definitely affected the price. What was really happening behind the surface and what Elon Musk may have actually known about was that China was quietly beginning to crack down on Bitcoin. That has since uh, crescendoed and accelerated. All the Bitcoin miners, or most of them, have been kicked out of the country and or in the process of leaving and certainly being unplugged. And the uh, CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, has begun to crack down on institutions using Bitcoin, etc. And this, this all makes sense in the context of a closed society that wants to control capital flows and that is about to introduce a central bank digital currency, which they're currently rolling out, basically a uh, spy, spy coin from the government. In the process of this happening, the hash rate which is the computing power of the Bitcoin network has fallen off a cliff going from near close to uh, 200 uh, terahashes down below uh, 100 terahashes. We've mon been monitoring the hash rate falling off a cliff, especially in the Chinese pools, which we can see right here under hash rate. Now, fortunately, Bitcoin contains a very interesting adjustment, which we've talked about called the difficulty adjustment. This just went into effect over the weekend, and we have the largest change in difficulty in Bitcoin's history, almost 28%. So what this did was made it less difficult for the miners to find a block. When the hash rate uh, was very high and there were a lot of miners, it was very competitive. And now that the hash rate has fallen, it's just a little bit too difficult for the miners to find a block in 10 minutes on average. So this difficulty adjustment makes it easier for them to find a block and tries to keep that uh, that average block time in about 10 minutes. So we've had this adjustment and this adjustment it happens due to uh, the, the lower hash rate and the fact that blocks have been coming in much, uh, much slower. So what has happened in terms of the cycle? Here we have various uh, halving cycles. We have the uh, this light blue, which is the 2012 to 2016 cycle. We have the dark blue, and I've showed you this chart before. The dark blue is the 2016 to 2020 cycle, uh, up into the, the halving of, of uh, May 2020. And then the red line is the current cycle that really started in, uh, we can see in May of 2020. And for a while, we were really outperforming even the, uh, the 2016 to 2020 cycle. And then we've since fallen below it. Now we're going to be talking about price targets here. So there are a couple price targets. The first one is Plan B's original stock to flow model, which is roughly uh, 100K. This is the, uh, the the light green line here. The dark green line is his cross asset model, the stock to flow cross asset model at about uh, $288,000 per Bitcoin in this cycle. We'll talk a little bit more about this, but I just wanted to show you here how we have essentially fallen off a cliff in the last few months. Things were tracking really well, uh, but since this Chinese crackdown happened, uh, it's definitely uh, impaired the price. So the real question is, where do we go from here? Before I get there, I just ask you if you're finding this video helpful so far to hit that subscribe and like button and maybe share this video with a few friends who are interested in crypto or Bitcoin. So Plan B is an anonymous account on Twitter. He uh, has years of experience in, the, in, uh, in finance. He's, he's from the Netherlands, and he has two basic models. He has the original model, 
uh, the original stock to flow model, and then he has the cross asset stock to flow model. And we're going to talk a little bit about both of these, uh, at least at a surface level. So the first one is uh, a model that provides this middle line that you can see here. These uh, colored dots, these colored lines are the monthly closing prices of Bitcoin. And you can see that they oscillate around Bit around the stock to flow model price. So even in the last very strong um, in the last very strong bull market in 2017, after the 2016 halving, even right here we can see that the price was trading below the model price. What typically happens is at the end of that of that uh, cycle, um, or at the end of the bullish part of the cycle, so 12 to 18 months after the halving, which would put us really at the end of this year, roughly, since the halving was in in uh, May of 2020, you get a blow off top and the price goes way above the model price. This is what happened in December of 2017. And then you normally have two years, roughly two years of kind of sideways choppy action and a bear market. This is the normal pattern. And we can see here that we were tracking very well on uh, compared to the model price until just a couple months ago when the China crackdown began. If we take a look at where this is headed, uh, the this red line is actually a 365 day moving average of the stock to flow model price and that's uh that's really what's charted here so we'll, we'll stick with that if we look at where we are at the end of uh december 2021 we're really at about eighty eight thousand dollars. i think the actual stock to flow model price is higher than this but this looks uh at an average and and really smooths it over 365 days so that gets us to roughly call it 88 $89,000. Now what people also do and what Plan B does is looks at standard deviations away from the stock to flow model price. So this is really just how high above and how high below we can uh, the price trades. Uh, the price obviously doesn't trade always right on the model price. So we have two, uh, two shaded areas here. We have the dark blue shaded area or the, the darker uh, shaded area and then we have the lighter shaded area right here it's a little bit difficult to see so the dark area is one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below the lighter area here is two standard deviations above and below this central uh, price which is the model line and so as as uh, plan b said in a recent tweet here uh, it's always a bit uneasy even for me when the bitcoin price is at the lower bound of the stock to flow model. We had something similar happen in September of 2020 when Bitcoin was really kind of stuck around ten dollars or $11,000. People have already forgotten that, uh, but at the time it felt very painful because it was a few months after the halving. We were really expecting a rocket ship, but we did get that rocket ship in the fourth quarter. This is a, um, I'm going to link to this page because this, this will allow you to have uh, real-time updates or at least 24-hour updates to these standard deviations. So if you go to this page, you can click you can click on one of these two charts, which I'm going to show you here. This has the, um, the standard deviations. And we can see that even um, uh, when, when you get a blow off top, you get very close to two standard deviations above the model price. And if we were to do that sometime this year, this definitely gets us uh, much higher than 100K. There's another version of this that's a little bit easier to see. We can see here that the the uh, two standard deviations above the model price would get us close to $250,000 even on this model. The two standard deviations below is approximately $25,000. This is where I'm getting the numbers from right here. So this model definitely has very wide uh, a wide range that it can trade in and still not be invalidated. Um, and it's always hard to know how do you buy, how do you balance uh, a model and all models eventually, you know, no, no models are perfect. They're just a way of digesting the world. And at what point is the model, uh, is the model broken? Certainly if we stay down here for the rest of the year, uh, you can consider the model broken. Now, there's another version, as I said, of Plan B's 
of Plan B's stock to flow model. And what he does in this version is he looks at different asset classes. So he looks at gold, he looks at real estate. He says, what's the stock to flow of those asset classes? In other words, what's the scarcity in terms of new production every year compared to the existing inventories? And he comes up with a target price for this cycle of $288,000. Uh, sometime between 2020 and 2024, Bitcoin hitting $288,000. So that's what these two prices are. You've got the 100K right here. As we talked about, you've got 288,000 right here. And if this is going to happen, it could certainly happen uh, in the next six months or so. Now, this wall of money that we've talked about, I believe this wall of money is still coming into Bitcoin. What a lot of people don't realize is that for, for institutions to do anything with Bitcoin, to either put it on their balance sheet or to set up uh, trading uh, programs for people who have accounts there, etc., this takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of committees. It takes a lot of internal and external approvals. And once they've started this process of either putting Bitcoin on their balance sheet or perhaps starting to offer trading, bit, uh, crypto or Bitcoin trading to customers, they're not going to roll it back simply because the price has fallen. There's a lot of institutional inertia. If, for example, you're the person at the company who's really leading the charge on this, this is what your job depends on, and you're not going to pull the plug simply because uh, Bitcoin has gone down 50% in price. Rather, if you're a really disciplined institutional investor, you'll look at this like a value investor. You'll say Bitcoin is really undervalued on various metrics, and we're definitely going to move ahead. So institutional inertia can really cut both ways. Uh, it's hard to get them started, but once they get started, they're not going to stop. And we're, we're already seeing that with uh, even this morning, Allied Payment Network is putting Bitcoin on their balance sheet, which means they're buying Bitcoin and holding it at the corporate corporate level. Marshall Waste is going to um, allow investing into Bitcoin and other cryptos. And even Goldman Sachs is ramping up their Bitcoin trading in partnership with Galaxy Digital. So the wall of money is continuing. There's certainly going to be individuals and corporations who've been scared off by the recent volatility. But those that have already initiated moving into Bitcoin, it's highly, highly unlikely they would pull the plug. It would take something very catastrophic, for example, a hack of the underlying Bitcoin protocol, which is never uh, has never happened. Another example here, uh, TP IC, uh, ICAP launching a uh, cryptocurrency trading platform. So institutions continue to, to move into Bitcoin, putting it on their balance sheet, offering it to their customers. I wanted to end with two interesting data points. The first one is, is, is derived from on-chain data, so looking at the Bitcoin blockchain. And this is what Plan B does as well. He's got the stock to flow model which really just looks at the scarcity of Bitcoin. And then recently, he's really <clears throat> become more interested in looking at what's happening at the blockchain level. This, uh, his, his models for this are not made public. I imagine he'll offer them for a fee at some point. But he has one that's based not on stock to flow, as I said, but based on on-chain data. And this one suggests that uh, Bitcoin will not go below $47,000 by the end of August. So just two months from now, we're currently at about 34,000. This is a very nice two month return. Uh, but his, his on-chain his on -chain model would be vol uh, invalidated. His on-chain model would be invalidated if we closed August 30th uh, below $47,000. So that's another data point we can look at. Again, that's not the stock to flow model, uh, but it is a model. Finally, for those of you to say $200,000 Bitcoin, this is crazy, this can never happen. And uh, to rewind, really, I, I took my uh, $200,000 price target uh, fairly casually. So I took the, the 100K model, uh, the 100K price target from one of Plan B's models and the $288,000 uh, price target from his other model and said, well, let's look kind of in between those two. I think $200,000 is a nice round number. We peaked at 20000 last time. And so I'm really, uh, there's nothing super scientific about this. And again, I'm a long-term Bitcoin holder. So even if stock to flow is violated, I'm going to keep holding. I'm holding this thing down to zero or I'm holding it into the millions, five, 10 million. And I really want to pass on my Bitcoin to my children and grandchildren.
So that's where the $200,000 price target comes from. It's not super scientific, but it is somewhere between the two plan B uh, price targets. And again, in, in investing, it's much more important to be directionally right than precisely right. But I think uh, for those who are skeptical that we can we can get to 200,000 and it does seem very difficult at this point. Though of course last year when Bitcoin was at four or 5,000 and I was talking about how it's gonna hit 50 or 60,000 this year, that seemed equally unlikely. So that's one example of where it's, it's, it's always very difficult to believe that, that Bitcoin can go up as much as it goes and go down as much as it goes. But this is one way that it frustrates people. If we take a look at the last cycle and that blow off top at the end of 2017, if we look at where we were in July, of 2017, so roughly the same time of the year as uh, we are now, Bitcoin was trading below 2,000. And between July and December, it went from 2,000 to 20,000, so roughly 10x up. We're currently at 34,000, as I said. 10x up from here is 340,000, which would be an overshoot of the the, the Plan B uh, stock-to-flow cross-asset model of 288,000. So I think 200,000 is is extremely uh, is an extremely conservative uh, price target for the end of this uh, for the end of this year. Maybe it happens in December. Maybe it happens in January of 2022. But I think that uh, what we will see from here is a recovery. The only thing that could continue to uh, keep Bitcoin down, as far as I'm concerned, would be uh, really an overt crackdown from a major government, especially the U.S. government. And uh, there are rumors of this happening and regulation, etc. I think that uh, if it is rolled out uh, based on certain Reddit threads, etc., that uh, it's really the more centralized cryptocurrencies that will be in trouble. The Cardanos, the Ethereums, Ripples, uh, XRP is already in trouble being sued by the SEC. These are much easier to regulate. Bitcoin is much, much more difficult to regulate. So time will tell. We'll be looking at uh, how we recover from this dip. We'll be looking for at that $47,000 August close to see whether it holds. And I think the really important thing, though, to to measure here and to be watching is just increased adoption uh, by people, by institutions, by corporations. And this is really what drives Bitcoin. As, as corporations and people become long-term hodlers, people like Michael Saylor hodling it on their own and also putting it on their company balance sheet and really taking it off the market, removing the supply from the market. And what people forget is that there still is an incredible scarcity of Bitcoin. Uh, there has been selling, there has been supply moved back on the market, but that is that supply is finding its way to very, uh, d very strong hands, into diamond hands. And when Bitcoin reverses here, there's not going to be a lot of Bitcoin on the exchanges to buy. And this is the sort of price action. This is the sort of fundamentals that can give us this blow off, um, blow off top price action. And so I'm maintaining my target of $200,000 for the end of the year. I've been wrong before about various things. Just remember, I used to be bearish about Tesla, then managed to flip around and get long. So there's certainly no guarantee in life or investing, but Bitcoin still has this uh, this programmed scarcity and it still has the strongest brand of any cryptocurrency. It has true decentralization and it also has the best security. It's under attack for proof of work, but proof of work is certainly more secure than proof of stake as we've talked about in other videos. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below, especially if you have thoughts about price targets for Bitcoin later this year or what you're seeing. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.